Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and we're about to feed my worms. So I'm uh, just getting ready to give them some some peelings from some carrots and some celery. There's a hunk of rice from the uh, Asian food store, the restaurant. What else do we have here? Cantaloupe rinds and a banana peels. I think that's about it for now. And you can see it's not a whole lot of food. It's only because we're going to be feeding um, two bins. And for two bins between um, the scraps, kitchen scraps, as well as the uh, used coffee grounds, I think we're going to have enough to feed two, um, two red wiggler bins. And the, uh, the red wiggler bins that I'm referring to are the ones on the bottom shelf over there. You'll, you'll remember that I used to have three actually. And the third one, which was really on just a mission to rest, was last fed 24, 25 days ago. But like you can see, it's not there right now. It's on a special mission. Um, a little top secret project that's uh, just started yesterday, and uh, we'll get to that one at the end. But let's get to feeding these red wiggler bins first. Um, I'll bring them up onto the bench here, and we'll get started. Oh yeah, besides the food I showed earlier, there's always the grit. Always want to, not, not always, but as frequently as you can, provide grit for these little guys because it's important for their digestion. The one thing you're not noticing here is the, the cover. The cover is because it's in use to hold the food, and I took it off the other one as well just for easier access. But now that I'm looking in here, now that I've got it up here on the bench under the lights, I can see a whole bunch of these little tiny insects cruising around everywhere. They're up on the sides of the bin. They're all over this cardboard. So, um, not sure what the deal is. I think I did observe them recently, but I didn't really want to make a big deal out of them or worry too much about them. So we'll see where it leads. I still think it's still kind of a manageable population. Doesn't seem too much like an infestation or anything, but hopefully they'll stay on that cardboard and uh, in here on this paper while well, we add food and then we'll just get them back to where they were before we disturb them. So it's been eight days since this bin was last fed. In this bin we're already encountering some newspaper chunks or maybe cardboard newspaper I believe. Hunks of stuff used as bedding. And I, um, I also ran into like banana peels as I was um, moving my fingers through this material. Here's another one I believe. Here's a large this is a large hunk of shredded white copy paper, printer paper. A little bit matted together. It's kind of like in little hunks or chunks if you will. Let's just move this stuff to the side here with the food scraps that I'm finding as I go. I was considering putting more bedding in today. I've got the, uh, yeah, besides the grit, in addition to the food I showed earlier, I've also got a bag of more of this shredded white copy paper, printer paper which um, I've been using, trying to use as bedding lately and just want to be done with it. It was a full bag all the way up to the top, a brown shopping bag full of shredded white paper. Quite a bit of it all over the place. I'm not going to pull out all of it I guess at this point because a lot of it is just resting down in here. Really what more interested in like remaining chunks of the actual food that they were given. These big pieces, so much. I must have really used a lot. I don't think I'm adding any more more of this bedding today. I think I've got plenty here. Um, maybe if I just can't, you know, you know earlier I just said leave it be. Don't mess with it. Especially if it's right down here at the bottom, maybe it's best that I don't mess with it and just leave it there. There's more down there. It's a little bit crushed down against the, um, the bottom of the bin. 
so we'll just leave it be. And we'll use all of this reclaimed bedding right here to put down a little bit of a platform to put the new feeding on. Okay. I'm always changing up the order. When's the last time I started with grit? I don't think I have. <laughs> Blazing a new trail. I don't know if I'm going to be able to break this. Hmm. The last time I had a block of rice like this, it just would not budge. This one broke apart pretty easily. So we'll throw that in there, kind of an experimental thing. Rice seems to behave differently each time I feed with it. We'll save the other chunk for the other bin. Other stuff to throw in here are yummy cantaloupe bits. Also got banana peels, a couple of them. Let's try to save half. Here's a kind of a test object that we've been kicking around for a while. Must have came out when I was digging through. So we'll get it back down into the feeding zone. It's a peach pit. Just dump it down there between the cantaloupe rinds and banana peels. So this being my newest bin is a couple months old now, so I don't really have a new a bin that I can consider a new bin. Since it's been months since I launched a new bin. <laughs> I think we're pretty good here. Just want to make sure none of that food I gave them is exposed, even though that coffee we used as a top layer is probably a good top layer to be as is. This looks pretty good. Let's get these things covered up and get the uh, other bin out here to feed it as well. Here's more of these little creepy crawlies all over this piece of cardboard. But uh, on the topic of the cardboard, this um, this is an extra piece that was added in here not long ago. Previously it was just that piece of newspaper and this cardboard on top. But with that extra piece of cardboard in there, man what a difference. As well as having the plastic over this, keeping the moisture down. Keeps the moisture level almost perfect in this bin. And, and all my bins for the most part having it set up that way. Alright, let's go feed the other bin. Okay, so now we refer to the previous bin as being the youngest, and uh, well, this is not much older. This is only about two weeks older. So, in this bin too, I did the same sort of setup with an additional layer of cardboard to help keep the moisture from wicking through and evaporating away, and it's been doing really nice. You can see the piece of paper that rests right on top of the bin is nice and damp, and this is just a uh, feeding zone indicator, which is resting on top of where we last fed eight days ago. Um, now, let me just add one other thing that's going on in this bin as we clear the previous feedings away. Um, that's a banana peel with the stem. This is pretty interesting. Cantaloupe rind. You can see through it like they've eaten the, the soft fleshy stuff, but the more woody brown parts of it they left behind. So back to what's going on with this bin. Um, just go, And it also ties into the little side project that the, uh, the resting uh, wind down bin is in the middle of right now. So this bin was actually a donor for a whole bunch of uh, volunteers that I needed yesterday to get the, uh, the resting bin into its new project. And um, to get those volunteers rounded up, I just came in here and I started scooping through here. So I did nothing more than I, you know, put put my hand in and grabbed a whole bunch of worms. And I, I filled, it, filled up a whole, like a quart size little tray um, of volunteers. And you can see if I needed that many again, I could easily just scoop in here and grab just as many once again. So the feeding zone has been reoccupied since I... Uh, enlisted all my volunteers yesterday through the middle. Um, but for now, all we're going to be doing is adding more food. Aha, uh -huh. another peach pit. So I guess both bins have a, an experimental object in them with all these worms. That's another banana stem. Look at all these little guys. Man, if 
heating zones in these bins are so heavily populated, it's insane. One observation, though, I'm making is, yeah, we're finding some more of this uh, leftover food, like this banana peel, I believe is what it is. I believe so. Might have a piece of newsprint attached to it or something. I thought I, thought I saw writing. But I'm definitely not seeing as many uh, hunks of the shredded paper as what we fished out of the previous bin. So yeah, this, this bin is a couple weeks older. But that shouldn't really make a difference. These bins are pretty much uh, being identically managed. Although I, I've always got this feeling in this bin, even now, even after taking all the volunteers yesterday, that this bin has just so many worms. It just feels like a way overpopulated bin, which is pretty awesome because <laughs> they just shred whatever food you put in here. So yeah, I, I thought I thought I'd end up with um, a whole bunch of leftovers, scraps from previous feedings and stuff. But here it's been consumed quite a bit more, I think, than the last bin we just fed. So it's pretty cool. Look at these little guys. <laughs> they squirm away from the compost that they're in to dive down. And in the process, they kind of just create this little ball of themselves, leaving behind a layer of the, uh, the compost that was stuck to their bodies. So, all right. I always get distracted. Can't seem to help myself from <laughs> fiddling around down in here. This is that peach pit. We'll throw it back down here in the bottom with these reclaimed food bits and bedding bits. All right, I think we got most of it. This will take the remainder of the food that was allocated for them. Another hunk of rice. And uh, pretty much all the same stuff in equal proportions. Maybe this bin should be getting a little bit more considering how many worms are in it. It just appears to me at least that way. Like there's just tons of worms in this one. Yeah, I think, we, I think we've given this bin almost an equal feeding as the previous bin got. They should make quick work of that. Okay. Get this thing covered up, and then we're going to go see where all of our volunteers from this bin ended up. To the final bin. Okay, so here we go. This is the back view into my little time-lapse chamber where I shot the previous pumpkin time-lapse under the stairs and as you can see we're doing the same thing again it's a revival of the pumpkin versus red wigglers time-lapse however in this case a um, couple things are different much smaller pumpkin um, the lighting's a little bit different it's a whole bunch of Christmas decoration lights creating a nice kind of even shadowless uh, light so uh, we'll see how it goes that's where the bin is, and the worms that we talked about earlier, the volunteers, they're inside. They were placed inside of the pumpkin with a bunch of bedding to keep them in there. <laughs> and, uh, and hopefully they're having a feast of the pumpkin right now from the inside out uh, and from underneath. So a uh, whole bunch of worms in that bin. Holy cow, wait till that one gets done and we start looking through there. We're going to see a lot of worms out in that one for sure. All right, well, that's the sneak preview, everyone. And... Um, now I got two time lapses underway. <laughs> I just wanted to give everyone a quick view of where all the other red wigglers are from my collection and they're right here. They're busy at work composting that pumpkin. All right everyone, hope you hopefully enjoyed the video and the little sneak preview. Uh, if you did then like as always please remember to give me a thumbs up and uh, show that you liked the video. And also consider signing up to be a subscriber to the channel. That's always really appreciated as well. All right everyone, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.